Hello everyone and welcome back to Lee's Stuff, my stuff where I basically try to go through some issues that I've either heard from clients, found out myself, seen people complain about, and uh, try to solve them and help you uh, figure out ways to get around them if I can. Today we're talking about specifically Windows 7, but we're also going to talk specifically about running programs in compatibility mode. First of all, why would you want to do it? And second of all, how do you do it? So, uh, for, actually, um, let me reverse that. First, how do you do it? Because then it'll give us the why. Uh, the important thing to remember is that uh, anytime you install a program, it expects that uh, it's going to be seeing some certain system variables and some uh, operating system environment issues that it expects to be able to see to run properly. And, of course, older programs are not designed to run with newer versions of Windows because they didn't know they existed or what was going to be in them. So uh, sometimes it'll cause a problem when you're actually trying to run a program. And uh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to set up your uh, environment for that program to run in an earlier version of Windows? Well, you can. With Windows 7, any time that you have a program, and I'm just going to use Google Chrome as an example here. I'm going to open up the Properties screen. And uh, any time you run a program in Windows 7, it checks to see if you've done anything with this compatibility tab. And uh, this compatibility tab, I'm going to walk you through all of the different parts of this uh, to let you know what to do. But first, uh, let me warn you, as always, anytime you make changes to your machine, whether they be small or large, back up your system. At the very least, create a restore point. But uh, it is not a bad idea to back up your system. And also, I'm going to, uh, in a next uh, my next video that I'm recording, maybe not the next one for you to view, but the next one in my re my video series will be on exactly uh, how to do the quickest, fastest, down and dirty way to get your machine back up and running uh, using the backup system. So uh, back to exactly where you were uh, when when you uh, last did your, your backup. So uh, first of all though, let me show you how to make this work. Now obviously there is a help screen here that Windows provides you and they actually also provide you with a uh, website uh, video to watch on exactly how to make this all work. But uh, let me walk you through this this portion of it so that you understand what everything means. Well, I was just telling you about how being able to run a program in a, an earlier version of Windows would be nice. Well, here's where you do that. When you check this box, it opens this drop-down capability up for you so you can open it and you can scroll back all the way to Windows 95. So what does this mean? It means that when you set this for a program and you apply it, the next time that you run the program, the environment that's set up for the program by Windows will be such that it will match the version that you've picked here so that all of the operating system uh, environment variables and uh, some of the ways that it handles memory and some other issues will all be created so that they mimic uh, this whatever version of Windows you've selected here for the program. And why is that important? Well, some programs just flat out don't understand or are or, or, or poorly behaved and don't realize that they're running in a different uh, operating system version, and they just assume that it's going to be the right version. Well, that's kind of a bad thing as a programmer to do is to assume much of anything, but sometimes it can't be helped, and there's not much that you can do about that. So you can select here anything from Windows 95 to Windows Vista Service Pack 2, which was the latest version of Windows prior to Windows 7 release, uh, and you've even got a couple of server uh, Windows operating systems here as well, or Mimics here. I call them Mimics. They're really uh, compatibility modes, but I call them Mimics. So essentially you just drop, uh, select this drop-down and pick from the drop-down the version of Windows you want it to run uh, in compati compatibility mode for. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously that isn't the only issue that, that causes problems with programs. Sometimes it really has to do with things like the uh, video drivers or, uh, you know, the way that the screen has to run in a particular mode. Well, I'm going to warn you of something, though, before you use this next section here in settings. You'll know that this really has to do all with video issues or video display issues, uh, video driver issues. And I can tell you that I've seen it happen on a couple of occasions where uh, when you run something in, in one of these modes, you select one of these modes, and sometimes selecting multiple uh, portions of these modes can cause problems too, but but when you run it sometimes, uh, it will kind of screw your screen up to the point where the program that's running is fine, but everything else is a total mess. 
So it's not necessarily going to help you unless you're really running you're running it just for that program, and and that's pretty much it. Um, that isn't the case all the time, but it is the case most of the time uh, with some of the well, some of the time with some of the programs I've seen. So just beware that uh, sometimes you can kind of lose control of your screen until you shut down that program, and then it'll bring it back to your regular Windows 7 environment. The last one I'm going to give you a huge, huge warning on. This is the privilege level, and this little checkbox does exactly what the checkbox says. It makes the program run in an administrative level. Well, that's extremely dangerous unless you understand the program well, you know exactly what the program is doing, and you know exactly why you're going to do this. Why? It's obvious, because the new viruses and trojans and things that are out there kind of maliciously sneaking around trying to find ways to attack your system look for programs like this, and when they see them, they try to exploit them. So be very careful when you're running this. If you if you check this box, you have basically allowed the, the program to run as an administrator level, and obviously that elevated level could be a serious problem. So think very hard before you click this box and say OK. Uh, if, you, if you do this, and you need to do this, and, and there are some programs that do require this, and I actually do it myself, just make sure that you are well aware of what the program is doing and that you've got a very good virus program, uh, antivirus program, and, and uh, anti-Trojan program on your system. The last thing I'm going to show you is kind of related to, to this in a way, but it really has to do with uh, different users on your machine. This box here, the one that comes up by default, is really only, in this case, the Google Chrome properties for me running as my user. So I make changes here, but they only apply to this program, in this case Google Chrome, uh, when I run it. And that is wonderful, but what about other users that may have that same problem? Uh, well, you can check this box, and you'll see it's pretty much a duplicate of the other box, but any changes you make here are reflected on all the other users' operating uh, windows, <coughs> excuse me, operating environments. So if you check this box, for example, here, every single user on your system will be able to run this program as an administrator. I think you can understand the implications of that. So be very, very careful before you make these kinds of changes. Frankly, I wouldn't do it. And for most of you, you only have one person, maybe two, that are in the machine. So be careful about how you utilize this screen here. Okay? Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, it it's it's kind of self-explanatory, but again, I warn you, be very careful. And before you make any changes like this, uh, do make a backup of your system. Do a restore point at the very least or at the uh, best, in the best case scenario, make a decent backup to make sure that uh, you're protected in case anything happens. That's pretty much it, and I hope it helps you. If uh, you find that you have any questions or comments or concerns, of course, post them on the channel, and either I or hopefully someone else, if I don't uh, get to you in time, will jump in and answer your questions. Until then, enjoy, take care, see you next time.